you hear that? A little bit of a delay on that. Okay, so we're going to start getting the ribs and the kind of gathering the circulation uh, in the breathing muscles, the intercostals. The diaphragm will have kind of a, uh, a challenge in this position. So this is a good one to kind of rev up your circulation. And, and I don't think we can say it's going to make you for sure more resilient. We're not going to give any medical claims on this at all. But it does kind of could get a little recharge in that part of your body. And if you're feeling depleted, this would be really hard to do. So if you can do this, you, you know you're probably doing okay right now. So just notice some of these intense shapes, uh, you wanna really work hard at just simply being in them. And they look easy, like you're doing not much, you're not doing much, but there's quite a bit going on in your breathing. So you'll have the roll at the base and you'll let your legs stretch down and don't get too worked up about the perfection of the calves on the roll. On the roll. You'll find out you want to sit at the edge of your bolster so you have the short end, get your sandbag nearby. And when you lower back, you're going to work on getting the, the ribs to have that lift and the shoulders to just touch down. Okay, so that's not perfect for me yet. I'm going to work on it. I, I like it when I can get my feet to touch the wall, but it's not always in the cards. The, the more important part is to feel like my blanket is kind of makes things easy on my legs. So the legs have a little bit more lift. It's pretty comfy. Okay. It's not as much of a lift as the bolster is under your back, but it's a place to settle so your feet don't fidget. Okay. You can fidget if you want, but we'll be getting the, the body first settled onto the bolster. So if you need to come back and forth until you feel like you're supported, you might notice the buttocks kind of shift a little bit on the bolster. Don't get worked up about getting everything compact um, because that's not really very helpful right in the, in, in the end here you know, with the poses. You wanna feel like you can surrender and kind of celebrate the circulation you get from these. There you go, that's what I wanna call it. Celebrate the circulation from the postures. Woohoo. Okay, so sandbag on the cross of the, cross the thighs. Make sure that sand is, it settles. And so if your feet get disturbed by it and they kind of spin out a little bit, take the legs a little bit farther out. Make sure that you're still on the blanket. But, you know, kind of dig into the, the support of your props. Okay, if you happen to have a couple sandbags, some people might, and you can add one across the ribs as well. But, when we reach back, hold on to the belt, and as you reach the arms out wide, feel the grip of the belt with the hands, and then try to see if you can get your chest to open a bit. Now, this isn't just the grasp of the belt. It's a, a feeling when you close your eyes and breathe in the first few moments to explore that circulation response. Your eyes could be open, it could be closed. You could be letting your head nod side to side. But the inner body, right, finds a new experience to open up into your restorative practice today. And feeling the in and out breath responding to the shape that you're in. You'll notice that there's quite a buoyancy in the body. It's kind of unusual to be in this shape for several minutes. And noticing maybe your unique experience with the grip of the belt, you can reduce the pressure of the fingers wrapping around and just get a feeling of pulling that set of your hands farther out so that you're working with also the arms. Relax your feet, they might turn out a little bit. And stretch the breathing muscles, the ribs, 
and the length of your breath. Keep it real simple. You now supercharge your breath for a moment. Let go of the belt and the arms can be down by the side. So this could be a light challenge with your, your back of your shoulders and the ribs, right? So you're working with this bulky piece under you and you're, you're trying to create this movement of the ribs that moves outwards and wraps around to touch the bolster. So it's it's just not a form, a formula of movement you experience during the day. Right? We're usually walking on our two legs, and this is maybe a yoga experience. So feel where the shoulders are trying to press back and a little bit of that squeeze into the bolster. And manage the motion of the inhale and the abdomen having some sense of lift and relaxing the abdomen back down. And then slide any sand you have off. Shift your feet so that the feet walk in towards the bolster and your feet might be at the other side of the bolster, the short end. So see if you can slide back just a little bit so that you're almost working like you're getting out, starting to get out of the pose. So the back of your skull feels more touch into the blanket. And then walk the feet up onto the bolster. And if this, you're, if you're pretty long and this, you're not able to walk up onto the bolster, what I would do is bring your hands to the bolster and slide it a little farther down so that your feet could touch it. And you could have a little elevation of the tail your tailbone, and then bring your feet together, the knees out into cobbler's pose. Now there's, there's always further to go with this variation. So you have to kind of lighten up on your expectations. So when the feet are together, the knees have that motion out. You know how the ribs center, and I would just stay with the center. I know they kind of move outwards like the, the knees do, the thighs do but work with that global sensation of lift and lower with the core body still. Just a few moments here. The arms don't have to be perfectly set, but mine are by the sides. It's nice to always have something to work towards. Okay, now move the knees back to center. Walk the feet down off the bolster and feel the solid structure of the bottom of each foot. Now, you wanna be sure your head is on your blanket, right? You're not, you're not tilting your chin up. Push into your feet, lift your hips, and then reach your dominant hand, would be best, down to the bolster on the short end. Push it out to the right, and then turn the bolster so it's across, horizontal, under your pelvis. You probably are gonna scoot back, or sorry, towards the wall so that the back of your pelvis is feeling as if it can actually flatten out when you're lifted on a bolster. So it's a bridge pose, right? And we just did a bridge pose. This is, this is another variation of a bridge pose, okay? So I want you to get a ball, bring the feet up off the ground and let the body go side to side so that you can wiggle your way into feeling supported. Wiggle the back of the pelvis till it's centered. And then the ball goes between the knees. And then I would take a block on each side of the bolster. And the block might be something you use as a touchdown for the, the, the side of the leg. And it might not. We'll find out. So the arms spread out easy from the chest. And make sure there's nothing too distractive by your arm on the side. And when you lift up your feet, you want to have a, a bend of the knees to begin so that you can squeeze into the ball. 
I suppose you could straighten the legs and still squeeze it, but the musculature, the gripping around the, the tissues, right, is quite, it's, it's satisfying when the knees are bending a bit. Okay, now feel when you let your feet lower and you tilt and you might, you might change your squeezing capacity just because you change the movement, but come back to squeezing the ball. Relax the squeeze. Make sure the ball feels like it's kind of cozy between the knees. I mean, the ball's not going to tell you if it is or not, but you're comfortable with it. And then the knees go towards the right. Let's kind of try to go on the same side in case there's directions. And I'm going to just touch down to the block. Now, the block can go up to any height, right? You can turn it up to the second height. I think the third height might be appropriate for some. So if it's too low, which means it's going to pull more, just turn the block up, okay? And then as you bring the knees back center, instead of trying to push into the ball, your work is on pressing the back to the ground, the part of your back that's touching across the shoulder blades, and then bring the knees over to the left. And the first two, I want you to be able to settle your, your side of the leg closest to the block onto it and see if you can work with all oh, this this rib cage open towards the ceiling so feel how that right arm is out how the center piece of the body is in a twist and the back of the pelvis is elevated well that's obvious huh the feet are just cozy don't worry about trying to make a perfection of the feet just let them be close to each other, wrapping around each other, if that's the case. Flexible feet. Right shoulder tries to stay down. As the knees go to the center, now go a little more carefree with your pace. You don't have to touch the block, but feel the range of motion, and perhaps even when it crosses over that we're trying to gain this midsection um, flexibility. By the time we get to half moon, it may you know, kind of have filtered out of your, um, your muscle memory a little bit, but this is a nice kind of start to getting prepared for some balance and kind of core stability. So your feet again can be together but your knees are not, they're, well, they, they're close. They've got a ball centered between them. But when you go side to side, be a little random about your pace and maybe close the eyes for a few of the moments so that you can sense the circulation dynamic in the middle of the body. Reaching through the back and into the hip. Feeling that stretch through the waist. It's pretty minimal. It's not a whole waist stretch. But we'll keep working with it. Come back and center and remove the ball. And let's grab the belt. And you'll need your sandbag as well. So if that's something you, you need to get back to where you're to near your mat, get a hold of that. And let's take the belt and buckle it up so you got a big loop. You want to make sure it's a pretty, it starts out after you, you prepare to get it together. You want to loosen it up and you don't want to make it so, so big that it's, it's kind of a, a loose hold for your neck muscles. But you want to find that when you step your right foot up into the belt that you offer, the left leg reaches down into the blanket. And you got a pretty big loop, okay? And when you prepare to put that belt around the back of your head, you remember you're not going to the neck at all. Never, never on the neck, but to the, the occiput. So this is where I kind of decide, well, I'm going to move my blanket a little higher because I might let my head kind of skim the surface of the blanket, and I like that cushion for this one. And then I'll add my sand to the top of the left thigh. 
over to the other leg. It's not going to do any good on the, the leg with the belt, is it? And if it's kind of sloppy of a, of a positioning, you can let it cross the leg so it's a little more, well, actually, it could be all directions. It could be straight down, it could be across, it could be slanted. You want to find how it holds onto the leg first, and then place the belt to the center. So you could kind of blocking the view, I think. So I've got my buckle on the other side. And then when I place the belt to the back of my head, the occiput, the occiput is, it, I think of this as the shell for the back of your head. That's usually what I like to describe it as. And if I get it right on the occiput, usually I end up going a little higher for me, for my belt. So I feel supported in my neck. If I go that low, I feel like the belt starts to slip to my neck. So for me, it's 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 like a little higher than that, that shelf, a little bit. It's stretching the shelf out, okay? Stretch your arms open and then feel how that left leg is going to respond. And try to smooth it out with the sand, supporting it. And then where are the muscles of the the legs are responding. Let yourself settle in for a little bit here. You know, feel how the neck is aware. It doesn't need to be overly stretched here. I'm just meditating on the structure of extension from your neck down through the whole spine. See if you can meditate on just that awareness down through the spine, through the bones. And when the leg is kind of kicking up, the right leg, you know, it doesn't stop um, and then go back down like if you're kicking. We hold the pose for a while. So you could bend the knee, you could straighten the right leg. See if you can find a few moments where you're making a pose kind of fit your needs. Using the pose to get into your body. And if it feels kind of nice for you to low, lower down your head to the blanket, sometimes that's good. I just get a lot of stretch on my leg. You can always loosen up the belt if it's feeling too challenging on the leg muscles. You know, when we switch the brain float, it's still the brain float. It's just brain float, second side. So we slide the sand to the belly. And we lift up the left foot. Now hold the back of your head so you're supporting your, your, your balance. Switch your left foot up into the belt. And you have to prepare that it's a different side. So even though... The last side, the neck probably feels pretty much the same. The back of the leg may have some, you know, different complication right with the movement. So adjust if you need to loosen up the belt, or if you decide, well, the last side was too intense. I want to be less um, pulled by the belt. You can always loosen it up quite a bit. But remember, if you if you get your sand onto the back of, I'm sorry, into the front of that right thigh, it'll change the left leg response. So this is important to do pretty quickly in the first minute or so that you have the sand on the right thigh. And as you let your arms release open, feel where the weight of your head motions. And the hope is that the belt is supporting you to find the center, right? That's, that's always the, 
the question on any of these poses is where's your center? Or if you even take a moment to find that. And I think that you would try to find that so you can meditate on where the center is in your shape and then work on expanding out of that center with the breath, with how you radiate circulation. All right, you finally get your own experience in your body, right? Focusing. Celebrating circulation. And sometimes it's stiffness you notice and it's difficult. So give yourself some options if it's you know, shaky. You can always take the belt off the back of your head and hold it with both hands. It's a perfect option. And then that allows you to adjust and fidget. But if the hands are like uh, little fists, you want to see if you can relax the hands a little bit. But your dominant hand is probably close to staying in a fist, right? But you're trying to spread out the fingers. It's like you need little bean bags in your hands to help that happen, huh? The next prop, right? Everyone has little bean bags. There's, there's probably a bin of them somewhere in your house. Okay, let's spend a few more moments here. Breathing slow through the nose. Relax the breath out either of the mouth or perhaps you could do Nostril breathing, both sides of the breath. Okay, now back in the left knee, little bend. Okay, we're gonna keep with the belt, but not with the sand. So slide the sand away. Okay, and reach the hands to the back of your head. Just shift the belt with your fingers and grasp it and then lift it up and head back on the blanket. Hold the belt together with the right hand and be aware that the blanket height, if you didn't change it, this is probably a good time to make it a little bulkier for the back of your, um, just the neckline, not the shoulders. It should be above your shoulders. Now cross the left leg to the right. No goal to touch a block, and actually no goal to touch a wall unless it happens to be there. But your field of movement is bend the left knee and reach through the leg. I'm not trying to, to make and reinforce it, you have to straighten it, but bending it and then stretching it across. Let's take that about five times, bending the leg and pushing it into the belt and the right hand's kind of stiff, it holds on to it. And again, bending. And then when you're crossing over the final few moments of this, see if you can find that pull with the right hand, the pulling pattern. And then the back of your pelvis is comfortable on the bolster. So if this crossover is too much, then you let the leg be a little higher. Well, actually, sometimes that's just where it ends up, right? It doesn't go farther. Okay, now bring that left leg back up. Take the belt, <clears throat> open it out so the right foot can come up and join. Left leg lowers down. Cross the right leg to the left. And yeah, maybe give yourself a little bit of, um, you kind of lackadaisical about it. Just feel if the foot can shift a little down and then you can swing it across. Yeah, this, this, a hard line of having the leg in, the, in straight up version and just cross it to the left may not be the way that the, the connective tissue moves out of that joint the best. So be holistic, right, about your approach here. Be mindful, but you know, you know, kind of breathe into it, feel how you hold on to that belt before you start the exercise of bend and straighten or extend, I don't wanna say, but just be straight with it. But bend the right knee, have the leg towards the left while you do this, the right leg. 
and then extend over to the left. Bend, it might be clicky. You might end up noticing hmm, something's clicking around, maybe. Don't get too worried about it, it's just sounds. But bend, it's circulation, it's lubrication, right? That's part of that whole process. And you need that circulation. So take a couple more of these bend and lengthens. And if your left leg is responding, like it's trying to move around with it too, see if you can isolate so that lower leg doesn't do anything. It's, a, it's kind of a ground force for you. Okay, now give it a, a few moments where you have the leg reaching across. It's funny, whatever you have in your environment, sometimes influences these directions with the legs. <clears throat> you know, I can tell if I have a wall near me, I change probably some of my habits of movement. So, you know, maybe when you close your eyes and you're in yourself, you can kind of feel the figure of the reach of the leg and just honor that you're, you're reaching out of the hip, however far it goes. Nice work. We bend the right knee, lift up both feet into the belt and step the feet out. Even though you're stepping upside down, you're still pushing them out. And let go of the belt so that your belt width is pretty big. It's a big loop. And you can tighten it up so it's a, not quite so expressive in the muscles. But feel where the leg is, is reaching out. Okay, and it's, it's two of them, right? So you have two approaches, two sides of the body, two sides of the back of the pelvis. Okay, so let's try this. We're gonna try to bend the knees. You've probably heard of happy baby pose before. Um, some people call it more of a, a straddle pose, but you wanna feel that the, it's a wide straddle. Bend the knees and then push the feet out. Take a few more of these, so you do about four, but bend and push out. Now the feet might not be able to turn out and push, because that's not how they arrange on the ankle beds, but see if you can keep that resistance. This is not a dynaband I hope you're using, so it's not elastic, so it doesn't push out. Okay, last time bending, hold the belt, slide the feet together, bend, take the belt off, and then we're going to roll to the left. And if your sandbag happens to be over on the other side, bring it over before you roll. So you got it. Ball and all those things. Roll left and then come down off of the bolster for a mini moment and get your blanket on the other side. Okay. All right. So we're going to, going to take the blanket that was rolled up and make a quarter fold or maybe more. You'll find out. Stack it on the other one. Make sure that there, you have a pretty good stack of um, blankets on the other side of your bolster. So the bolster approaches behind you, away from the wall. And then we'll set up for side stage. So I'm, my cumulative focus here on the poses is to get to some basic standing balance stuff. So it'll be very basic, but keep in mind this mid body kind of supported and trying to support the range of it. So have a block on the other side of your blankets. Maybe it's high. And then add your sand to the side of your waist. So you're leaning into your bolster with your left side. Okay. Now with the body on its side, there's a reasonable response you would kind of turn towards the ceiling. So you have that circulation in the chest. Okay, so that's fine, but I want you to, to sense that when you move your right arm over, or maybe this is too much for some of us, this might be the right arm is down on the blanket, or you put your block, you know, kitty corner, not overhead. So you choose with the right arm, whether it touches the block, or it's, you shift the block so it's easier on your shoulder, or maybe you don't use the block and you have your arm besides your sand, okay? But find the approach where the side of your head is on the blanket. So there is a connection to your ear, okay? And the response of the inhale is to expand, 
and center. Sometimes too much bend of the elbow is counterproductive on this one. So if you do find keeping that full line of reach with the arm might be helpful. Just feeling the weight of the body leaning and balancing the movement of the breath. If it feels easy, that's okay, right? Using the props to support this, this range of motion will come in handy when you're trying to balance and use muscles. So this mid body is having some moments of refining, even if it's temporary. It's okay to feel just cozy and comfortable temporarily. Nothing wrong with that. So let's take a final few moments, not a complete nap, but close. Okay, a big change of movement. We'll travel towards all four. So the travel time is it's very short, right? But you need to move the sand. And when you turn to the left, well, actually you're just shifting to turn to hands and knees. Let's, let's get a feel of hands pressing next to the blankets and the bolster between the two. And when you offer that reach of the, of the, the back muscles, right? So the back muscles have this kind of interesting connection into the arms and the presence of the pushing. So can you round your back into a cat pose, right? So it's flexing the spine. And inhale, arching. Okay, feel what it's like to arch and flex a spine. Yeah, maybe a rare thing for you to think about doing, huh? It's, it's probably, mainly this way, right? If you have your hands under and your knees, you can do the sitting in a chair, but it's, it's, not, it's not quite as both sides getting that movement. So find what is your challenging shape. Is it the round, the flex, or is it the arch? See if you can work through both of them. Instinctively notice where the weight into your fingers, like spread out the fingers, really work with that. What is a good presence of palms? And then let your toes hook under. You know, kind of pause on your, your expectation where you're going and just get a feel of movement forward into the roots of the fingers, movement back, lifting the knees and alternate bending the legs. And that's more than a knee, right? It's, it's a movement of a hip, it's a movement of an ankle and a foot. So feel how you alternate and you kind of push out the calf back and down towards the heel. Feel that reach through the bottom of the feet. And then once you sense the stretch to the back of the legs fully, Right, let it be a pretty long dog pose. So it's almost as if you don't quite have your hips up very high, you have more of a stretch back with your feet. And then take the feet to a, a pretty wide step apart. 
Okay. It's not as wide as the mat, but it is still a, a step apart with the feet. Okay, lower down, lift the heels up high, high, and then lower the knees down. So it kind of tosses you back to table. Toes relax, round the back into cat. Yeah, relax the buttocks, see if you can use the muscles of your back, ribs. Okay, and then shift and move your hips to the right. Walk your hands to the left. And then see if you can come down kind of nicely into that right hip down and side sage on the right side down. So you've got your ball maybe on the inside of the left knee or the inner thigh. It's either one, right? You, you don't have to make it so we all have the same idea with this. The idea is that you have support so this, this knee doesn't drop down on the hip channel, right? Has some range. So when we reach the sand support on the side, right? <laughs> it's kind of lopsided. I don't really have it honestly evened out. So take the time. And then when you lie into the props, you might roll the ribs. Yeah, using the props to, to get the circulation uh, you know, integrated into your practice without having to effort is so good. That's why these props are they're just excellent, right? You can use a prop and relax into it and it's helping your circulation, right? Without having to be so forceful or effortful with every shape. Not all poses will be, will have that offering, right? Of just relaxing into the props. And there could be some areas that are stiff here that you're working with, loosening up. So let the back of your head feel where it wants to be. Maybe for me right now, it's, it's on the blanket. Some of you are going to feel very comfortable with the side of your head down. Arm reaching. So as the ribs expand and contract, see if you can let that be more subtle. So it's not a, like a snapping feeling with your breath, it's, it's fluid. It's even more fluid than like fluid movement, isn't it? So if something was like pouring, it has a speed to it with gravity. But with your breath, it's, it has a nice kind of porous quality with the movement of the skin, the fibers. It's just a great connection with yourself. And we'll keep the leg variation very similar when we come up to sitting. So you'll notice right now, your right hip is kind of your base balance right now. And your base is your hip. So when you lower the left arm down and slide the sand away, okay, let's see if we can, you know, kind of transfer it. I, and I would just say go a little slow. You know, I can't see what everybody's up to exactly, but go slow so you can figure this left side has done some work to release. It doesn't mean it's fully stretched out. It, it's, it has this awareness of settling. Okay, so now when we roll to the right rib cage, we're going to be coming up to sitting, but see if you can let this be really smooth and just easeful. So I roll right. If, if at any time of your day in yoga, roll to the right, come up, okay? Get a blanket stack and pull it in. Get your block if you have it on the other side. 
put it towards the legs. Use your hands, and then when you sit up on the bolster, if you've already gotten there, you're waiting. You're going to use this leg that you have reaching on the side. You're going to actually use the, you're going to turn it on into the opposite direction. So we have a block, place it flat, and then bring your left foot on top. So the knee rotates while well, the hip is kind of helping circulate the left leg open. Okay. So you know, kind of feel your bolster is really good for this. If you're sitting on kind of a round bolster, that might be interesting balance for you. So it could be tricky. It's doable though. All right, add a sandbag to the right upper inner thigh, just where it folds open, it moves open. I would avoid the ball if, unless you need it on the right knee because we're gonna be taking this deeper twist. So first things first, my hands are on the bolster, on the back, sliding down to the floor, kind of cupping the bolster, and then I'm leaning forward. Okay, there's always further to go, right? You're probably not going so far forward that your chest is on the left leg, but you're leaning forward. That would be a little too much mobility, huh? Okay, now when you come back up, you know, feel just before you're, you feel like you're sitting back and slumping. So see if you can stay with that upright, a little bit of a lift of the chest. Okay, now can you use the muscles in your core, which doesn't mean just like this front, which I, I have the mistake of pointing at that. It's this whole band, like the posterior core. So kind of feel when your left knee points up, what muscles, if you pull at your hip flexor, the top of the thigh, that's a little bit of a, uh, I want, mistake is the first word I come up with, but I would prefer to use this core band. Okay, so I'm gonna hook my right hand to the left leg and cross it over the right leg. So I've actually taken it off the block, crossed it on the other side of the right leg, and then place the right arm to the inside or the outside of the left leg. This is becoming a puzzle, huh? And then hook the elbow to the outside of your left leg, bring your left hand back, touch down on the blankets, and you get a feel of the weight in your sitting bones here. Okay, so let the weight be pretty solid. There's always further to go with your, the correspondence with your arm and your hip and always further to go. So let's say you hook the elbow and it, you just feel disfigured. It's like, this doesn't feel very ideal. So you could hold the leg, like hook the arm around the left leg. I like that. It gives me a, a strong sense of, of um, balance through my ribs when I do that. Ace is here now. We'll see if he comes over to the screen. Looks like he's gonna jump up on the bed. Oh well. <laughs> so turning the body, getting a twist. And then when you get a feel of the, the core layer, the lower core, see if you can motion that you're lifting the chest. So there's always this kind of band of this balance, like you're not a dyna band, I know, but you feel like there's an elasticity of the waist. Okay, now when you turn back center, can you counter pose? So come back to the center, turn same leg as front, turn to the right, left arm. This one's kind of easy peasy. You just let the arm rest on the left knee and down to the chin and turn. Okay, so feel how there's rotation through the waist. Okay, then come back center and take the sand away and stretch the left leg back behind you. Okay, so let the left leg reach on back and you're in pigeon pose. So if you get a center of movement through the front of the left thigh, it might be that it just kind of sticks down and it lengthens. 
but isn't it nice to have a bolster to kind of support that front of that hip? So when you reach the palms down, you feel the natural arch. You want to notice that there's a hip strength on that right side. So if I push into the ground and I lift up, I just love the stretch in my uh, mid body, kind of the core chamber. If I lower down, it seems like it's a, it's a thorough stretch, but if I'm here for a bit, I like the coordination, haha, the coordination. And then as your elbows lower down, take a few moments. Some of you I know have expressed that you like when we go a little bit to the side with the hands and reach. So feel free to go to the left with your hands and lower the elbows down or stay right in the middle or stay lifting. And you get a feel of how the back muscles respond. Not the easiest position, right, for the, for the back. And when you do come out of this, I want you to, to work with the, the action of sitting but lifting out of the rib cage. So when you walk the hands back towards the legs, feel that your right knee reaches forward. So it has like its own um, extension, its, its own extremity movement, right? So when I swing the left leg forward, now I'm gonna switch out the leg crossing. So we know this leg is gonna be our base. So we'll cross that left foot under, okay? The foot is towards the bolster. Place the block in front flat, and then onto the block. So the foot turns out, Just try to stay with the focus, and then add your sand to the left thigh. <laughs> These sandbags never seem to feel lighter. Even when lifting and lowering them over and over <laughs> over the decades, they always feel like a little weight, a little bit of heaviness. But the experience of the body connection with that weight may change, right? You can kind of give into it. It's a reminder to just to surrender to the where the sand is to the thigh flesh stretching. So this one, grasp a hold of the, the bolster and lean forwards. And get the feel of where the, the, the grip is in your hip, like kind of on the inner hip joint. You're going to feel the groin stretching so that circulation through the lymph, stimulating that flow of lymph. And the right foot could be kind of flexy, active. It could be relaxed. But lean a little bit forwards. can tell how these poses are all kind of have some similarities you know some of these cross-legged patterns whether we're a pigeon or we're seated they just kind of um work they chisel their way at the the stiff area slowly some of them you like more than others okay now when you come up let's say you felt a little pinch of, of pressure in little spots of the knee when you do come up i want you to really work with the larger band of the leg, feel when you lift up your knee and you have your foot down. I mean, do you have the, the, the bandwidth, right, to cross the leg over and hook it to the other side of the leg? You might not, it might be just, you just grip too much in your hips, so you've got to hold on to it and step it across. So, you know, in time, you don't need to pull yourself into a position that's uncomfortable, but if you get that foot across, if this doesn't work at all, you can put your block closer to your left knee and step your foot on it and do the same pose this way, right? With your foot on the block. Now, some of us, this just might not be, just doesn't work today. So get a feel when you twist that the left arm connects to the right leg, however you want to use it. You can hook the elbow, you can hold the leg and Feel if you tend to lean back, feel if you can let the, the waist lift up and the body twist. And just let your eyes center. 
Feel the rotation through the spine. Breathing and feeling it lift. Yeah, always further to, to, to go here with the waist turning. So noticing that we're doing the rib work, not trying to twist from the lower back at all. So you're working on elasticity of the middle. So as you come back now forward with your heart, you're turning to the left, right arm to the inside of that right leg and keep working on that, that mobility, the circulation, Elasticity in the middle. Okay, as you feel how the right foot touches down for one more moment, come back center, take the sand away, and then place that right leg so you're gonna reach it behind you. Now if you reach it up and it's in midair, you know, get a feel of you're leaning into your left leg and stretching the right thigh back. And the balance into your yeah, I know the hands are obvious support, but there is a balance on your left hip here. Okay, so feel what that's like. And if you reach your hands forward or you turn your, your body to the right to stretch, you could go with that. Don't let the prop in front of you limit you. If this is kind of in your way, you can move it away. Um, so that you can kind of gather that this isn't probably intense for most of us on our left hip and the left side of the back. And then lowering the elbows down is always a great choice. Get the feel of the muscles soaking up the sensation. You're working your way into your forearms. If you haven't gone down to the forearms, this is a good time to lower down. There's probably been some work now into your hip. Okay, so let's see how we transfer that into our kind of full, full, uh, more full body uh, patterns. So I have a little bit of, of strength and endurance. So when we push to come up, what we're going to work our way towards is to bring the, the hands and knees Let's just step the, the back into this and then we'll, we'll come to the wall in a moment. So push into your hands, lift up the left leg, stretch it back, alternate bending your legs. See if you can kind of swing back through each knee and back to the heel. Okay. Now lower down the knees, turn the bolster straight in front. We're not using the wall quite yet. And let the knees center wide and let your forehead touch the bolster. And feel the hands. Maybe you decide to bring them up on the bolster because you just want no wrist pressure, and that's fine. But notice how when the hands go up or the hands are down, there's this little bit of pull in the back. Okay. And now come on up, and let's take our body to the wall with our feet to the wall. So you're going to turn so that your feet go towards the wall and you've got one blanket underneath your knees. So if you've got your blanket in a quarter fold, this will work great, okay? Um, yeah, just use the quarter fold so you have enough bulk to support the, the kind of to be a little spring load under the knee. And then once we're onto the hands and knees, let's get a blocks set in front of us. So you've got two blocks. Put them kind of on the sides of your mat so you can use the whole mat for this exploration. And then 
We'll bring our hands, stretch them forward. So we just had kind of this awareness a moment ago. Let's give ourselves time for us all to arrive with our feet to the wall. And then as you reach your hips back, I don't know, I don't feel like I really get my hips to reach back here as much as I, I'm trying to stretch my back is fully, you know, in extension, okay? Which doesn't mean I'm flexing around it. I'm trying to reach out of my, my chest muscles. So this, you kind of notice your back stretches partially how far you can stretch your chest. Okay, now toes are under. This is endurance work, I know. And you lift your knees up so you're still stretching and you lift up your heels at the base of the wall. So there's a little tilt of your heels up and let the chest keep stretching. Always further to go. We'll be better for it. So work on that range of the chest muscles, the ribs, uh, all the circulation to the face. And let's take a little inversion. So we'll bring our hands a little closer back towards the blanket. Make sure the heels are off the wall and then walk on back so that your feet have a nice pressure into the soles of the feet. Scoot your feet a little forward so that when you rest your weight into them, your back muscles elongate and the weight of your head releases down, okay? So standing forward, bend. Uh, yeah, keep it so the feet are on the ground versus um, the blanket lifting the toes. Just let the sitting bones touch the wall. Okay. Use the wall to help your inversion. It's a little different than legs up the wall, isn't it? It's sitting bones up the wall. <laughs> okay. All right, so consider that one. Now, if you're too close to the wall, you feel like you come up, you're going to somersault forward, you just scoot your toes forward before you present that position for your back. Let's take it. We're changing our course here, but we're going to roll through the back to come up to standing. Okay. Take a step forward with your left foot. Turn to the right, so your right foot is against the wall. You have a wide stance. Hold the sides of the legs. Don't let your knees squeeze in any more than they already do. And then move your hips back and have your hands on the sides of the legs all the way towards the lower leg, maybe your ankles. You don't need to jam your foot into the wall. It could just be that you feel the side of the little toe. It's hard not to keep pushing the foot into the wall, but. You can feel the side of the foot, but just try not to overly pressurize your foot. And then head down. Now even more circulation to the head. And let your head nod a little side to side. Okay, the elbows can be soft. You don't have to push them out. Okay, now. We turn to the left and walk our hands over, turn the left foot towards the, away from the wall and get your blocks. And I want you to have them high up. This is as high as they'll go. This is it. Okay, so the right side of the foot is against the wall. Right, your foot is down, though the bottom of the foot is down, but the side of the foot is against the wall. We're not quite foot up at the wall yet. Now you can feel this right hip is kind of moving outwards just naturally with the support. So why not bring your right hand to that hip? It could be the arm is on the side. It could be the hand holds the hip. I kind of like that. And then make sure your left bottom of the foot is pushing down and the knee is moving away from the wall as you come up and warrior two, have the stance so the left inside leg is stretching open. This is so good for our knee health. So Try to keep this inner leg stretch, All right? We did this in the beginning, a little, you know, kind of 10 minutes in maybe, we had the knee movement out. So you wanna get a feel of this openness through the leg. Right hand at the wall might be a little challenging for some of us with long, the reach of the arm might be too much. So some of us, this works good. Some of us, the arm is kind of up the wall. But reach through that left arm. You can see, I know, most of me. <laughs> okay. Reach down with the left hand to the block. And then right hand to the block, but keep this hip open. 
passionate. I said, this is, this is a bit of a, a challenge, but you've set up pretty nicely. You have the side feeling like it's moving open. All right, hands on the blocks high. Okay, scoot the foot back. So it's going towards the blanket. So you have it under your hip joint. And then you're going to be working your weight into your left foot. Then lift the right foot up at the wall. Okay, so keep it simple. You're really close. You got all these props, then walk the blocks a little bit farther away from the wall, but they're on the mat. You, know, you don't wanna walk in towards your, your screen. And then when you push your feet, both of them have to push to hold the balance. Maybe you bring your right arm towards the ceiling. Maybe you decide that it's just enough where it's at. So you choose, but this awareness, that's great, Floyd. Get a feel of the tail moving towards the wall, right? So it's towards that right leg. Okay, and you're turning the chest towards the ceiling. Now you keep working with the waist rotation. I know it's easier with the waist on bolster, isn't it? But this is giving us some measurement of that scale turning. And lower the right hand straight down to the block, a block near you. And now pivot so the foot at the wall, you're gonna turn that foot to the, the foot, to the foot faces down, toes face down. It's a little intense in the left leg. Now walk the blocks back to support you. Breathe. It only helps for certain on this one, huh? Okay, step the right foot down to the left foot. Ugh, the easiest step you've done so far. And then maybe alternate bending the knees like you're kind of swishing through the legs. You're kind of wagging your tail a little bit too. And keep it simple. Let the arms dangle down. No holding on to, well, you could hold your elbows, but you can let the arms dangle and the wrists relax. And the weight of the brain stretches the spine. Let the head nod a little side to side. Okay, now lift up your hands to the blocks, use them under your hands as you step the left foot back. Okay, now as you step the heel, so it maybe lifts up a little bit at the base of the wall for a moment. I want you just to let that be purely a feeling of kind of recharge into that right leg. Okay, and then pivot the back foot so the side of that left foot is touching into the wall. It's on the ground, the, the, foot, the bottom of the foot is down, not lifting. And then get a feel where your blocks, now you can, you know the blocks are a little forward on half moon pose, but we're not at half moon yet. So make sure that you feel like you can use the undercurrent of this right leg. You can reach the knee just above the ankle. So if it's over the ankle to the toes, you wanna to step your foot a little bit farther out, scoot it out, left hand on the hip, Bring the right hand off the block and standing up so you can reach the right knee away from the wall. Left hand maybe to the wall or up. You don't have to have it at the wall. I, I like the hand at the wall because I can kind of give this little press. And then I just feel kind of stable and like it's a resistance exercise is kind of what we're doing, right? We use the wall for resistance into our bones. That's how we do bone work in the, in the yoga practice is with all the resistance. So you can let that right arm stay reaching in front. You can lift it up if you want to swing back so you can stretch your torso. But in general, we're working our way towards stretching down with that right hand to the block. Left hand reaches down, so you have something to help you get into balance. Slide the right foot back, lift the left foot up at the wall. So if you look at your foot at the wall, it's turned out, right? It's only a leg lifting, right? It could seem like a bit more. Right hand takes the block away and the left hand. 
And then it's getting this right hip to stay stable above the knee, right? So if this kind of kicks out, like you're pushing your rear out, it's going to, going to disable the balance. So you've got to work on the hamstring that we started in class with stretching, left arm lifts, and then we rotate. So this class today is kind of like we have a peak pose that we're working towards with all our poses. Yeah, make sure the right foot doesn't turn in. Oh, they like to. Feet like to do all kinds of dances, huh? So push into the wall with your left foot. Keep working on it. We're almost there. This side could be a little more fatiguey. Good work. Turning the belly towards the ceiling. Okay, left hand goes straight down to the block. Whew. Okay, this time, left foot steps back. Lift up the foot one more time, one more endurance exercise. Block shift back, feel the bottom of, sorry, feel the base of the foot at the wall, toes facing down. Yeah, this right hip kicks out. See if you can shift it back. Okay, bone strengthening here. Good work. Lower the left foot down, lower the knee down. All right, okay, right knee back. Shift the blocks over to the side and then stretch your hands forward and reach your hips back, forehead down, but try to keep the hips back and up versus trying to push them onto your feet. Span out your fingers. Okay, now we come back to table and we're going to turn to sit and then take our blanket behind us and then our bolster at the base of the wall. Straight arm down flat. If you have two choices of bolster, use a flat one on this one. I guess you could use a round one. It wouldn't be the end of it all, but it might actually be kind of nice. So you, you choose your ch boy, uh, bolster of choice. Okay, so we have our blanket underneath that mine's all the way down flat, as I mentioned. And then I want you to get a ball between the knees. Now press down and lift up the hips, stretch the arms back overhead. Lower the spine and the arms. Try to get them to go down in tandem. I know the arms go much slower, but you're working your way, alternating, lifting the hips. Stretching the torso and lower down. And now as you bring the knees into your chest, okay, remove the ball, but place a block. Now, so let's let's go with one, one block today. So you're gonna have the block at the second setting, unless it bothers you, you go to the lowest setting. Okay, so lower the feet to the bolster. Now you make sure it's pushed against the wall. You know, scoot back a little bit. So you got your legs that can lengthen. Lift the hips up, slide the block under across so it's horizontal under the pelvis, and then the legs stretch. I am too far away from the wall. So I want to have my feet push into the wall. There we go, that's nice, okay. So we have that range of reach. We did this in the beginning, right? We had this kind of cycle of movement, but it didn't have this piece of it, this lower piece. It had the upper reach. So see if you can balance it now here by moving your shoulders back and in towards the spine, palms open, expansive chest. Okay, rest in your eyes. I'll give a few moments here. This final set of the session that we're working our way towards releasing holding patterns. And feel the cycle of movement in the belly.
you know, the feet walk so the bottoms of them touch the bolster. Okay, now feel where the back of the pelvis touches the block. There's a little bit of lift. And we're going to repeat that lift in a few moments with the legs up the wall, but for the just a, a few seconds in between, let's slide the block away and then we'll cross the lower the hips down first. Cross the left leg over the right leg and let the knees shift to the left. Now you might need a block or a ball. Sometimes the block works perfect on this one under the left leg. So it's a holder for the leg so the knee doesn't get extra unnecessary pull on the side of the right knee, okay? So the left leg crosses over the right leg so it pins and stretches it. It's, it can be quite intense for some of us on our IT band. So if it just feels way too much, you can back off and have both knees together and knees to the left. You can do something a little easier that way. Um, with maybe the ball uh, on the side of the leg, that's a little softer. So let's take this for a few more breaths so that you can feel the side muscles. You don't need to push the knee far over to the left. It can go downstream. Yeah, so if I lift up my knees and try to push it over to the left, actually that feels a little easier on my knee, but this one gives me a, a little more stretch into my hip. But as long as your knee doesn't have like a spiking sensation or a pain or a jolt, if it feels like it's a tug on the tissues, and there's some pulling, that's a little different. Or is it? Still feels like it's intense. Okay, come back into the center. You can let your arms be wherever you're comfortable with them. Right leg crosses over left leg now. Shift the side so the knees go right. And again, use the block or ball. I know the ball's a little bit more responsive. You, know, you can squish it with the leg. So that might feel more cozy for you. But I can't say this is the coziest stretch. It is a, a nice pull through the side band. And let it help the circulation around the knee, not make it, you know, not make it a vicious stretch. So you want to get a feeling of how do your knees go right now in this direction? For a few more moments. Okay, now bring the knees back into center and uncross. And now you'll bring your knees into your chest. And I would try to roll up towards the wall. And then you're going to have your sandbag closer to the wall and a blanket. And have it folded to a quarter fold. Okay, so the rounded part of the blanket versus the the, the fringe area is away, so the rounded part is towards, your, towards the wall. And then push your seat back to the wall, so your sitting space is close to the wall, as if you were, had an illusion that you could sit with your sitting bones at the wall. <laughs> but you can't levitate like that. So you're sitting to the wall, and on the very side of the bolster, this is something you really want to exaggerate. You're on the edge of your bolster, arm slides under, and then you swing the legs up. And once the legs are up, you are going to scoot your tush towards the wall. Okay, if you happen to have all the comforts around you, you could put a blanket on you as well. And then sandbag goes on the soles of the feet. Okay, this is the excellent completion of a, a session that has had quite a bit of circulation uh, bonus. So this is the circulation bonus here. So with this lift, right, the, it, it stimulates the flow of lymph in the groins, right, stimulating the, the vascular and the immune system. 
So you want to have the arms below the heart. So lower the arms down. And again, you can put a blanket on you, an eye pillow across your eyelids, something that brings you that completion and centering along with the breath and that inner vision of receiving wellness from your practice today. Yeah, enjoy the sensation of the sand on the feet. Where's the warm beach sand? <laughs> Feel the movement of breath filling the lungs. And the abdomen lifts. So that's the diaphragm muscle pushing down towards the abdominal muscles, right? The diaphragm itself pushes down and the, the resistance is the organs. And then as you exhale, let your exhalation lengthen. As the diaphragm shifts back towards the heart. So it's strengthening for the heart. It's also soothing for the lungs. Nice to create your own shapes that can be also supporting the organ's health. Now, if you're still kind of tense in the face, maybe let your head nod a little side to side. And come back into center. Is shift the feet from the wall, but see if you can manage the sand and the balance into the stretch of your feet, the calves. How about your legs and your lower back? And then you can bend your knees in a mild bend and then kind of let your sand slip off. So everyone has their own little tactic on this one, I've noticed. Not quite everyone's the same with it, but you might like to bend the knees kind of deeply to massage into the digestive tract. This can feel a little intense, kind of a, a, a stimulation, right, into that sensation of the body. And then as you move the sand aside, if you haven't, long ago, <laughs> feel where the feet are at the wall. And this is just a great stretch for your back and your, your digestive tract as well, because you can kind of feel how there's resistance in the feet and there's pressure around on both sides of the, the sides of the waist and the scooping into the hip joint. Okay, now roll any side you want to go but you eventually want to sit onto your bolster. So kind of decide where you're going to go and then take a seat up onto your bolster. Feel where the back of the pelvis touches towards, well, it doesn't exactly push to the wall for all of us probably, but for me it's not. It's kind of pitched off of the wall into an arch. So feel where the back of the body touches, what does touch the wall. And use that as a support for your lift out of your hips. Let your hands slide from the legs and meet together in front of the heart center. And feel that the elbows have kind of a resting position when the hands just gently touch at the, the fingers. They don't have to push deeply. It can be relaxed touch. 
And relax into your heart center, breathing in deeply. And exhale, bowing into your heart. Namaste.